Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, King of glory. Jehovah, we bless you. We honor you and we give you praise. We give you adoration and everything, oh God. Lord, we bless you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Thank you. Hallelujah, King Jesus. Father, we are grateful. We thank you and we bless you. And we give you glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you, my God and my King, for another beautiful service, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for your goodness. We are just so grateful. We thank you for another beautiful day, beautiful service, going so well. The, 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 the praise, the worship, the prayers, the prophetic words has been shared, going back to our night vigil on, on Friday night. Thank you for everything, Jehovah. We are just so, so excited at what you are doing in Kingdom Gospel Church, the city of the Lord, where our walls are salvation, and indeed our gates are praise. Thank you, Holy Father, for the new identity you're giving to us. God, we are, we, are, we are just so overwhelmed, oh God, by what you are doing. We thank you. Thank you, Father, for the service so far. Even as we come to this time of your world, we hallow this hour because you are going to speak to us. Lord, we, you have our maximum attention because our hearts are prepared to hear you and our ears are open to, re, to hear your word. Thank you, King of Glory, for your faithfulness. Father God, we bless you. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to Kingdom Gospel Church, the city of the Lord, where our walls are salvation and our gates are praise. Indeed, that is the new and fresh identity the Lord gave to us on, on Saturday morning. You know, I reckon it was about 2 a.m. or so, 2.30 a.m. As we were in night vigil praying and God ministered to us out of the prophet Isaiah chapter number 60. In verse, in verse 14, he, he said to us that people will be calling us the city of the Lord. And indeed, in verse 18, he said, he said our walls, we shall call our walls salvation and our gates praise. And so we have a, a brand new identity from the Lord. Amen. Kingdom Gospel Church, the city of the Lord, where our walls are salvation and indeed our gates are praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God, we are excited at what you are doing. Oh my goodness, I can hardly contain myself. Thank you, Jehovah. We bless you, we praise you, and we honor you, O oh God of heaven, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for today. By the grace of God, I bring you the word of the Lord. Amen. On today, I want to look at Matthew chapter number six, verses 24, I believe it is, until the end of the chapter, as we look at the right pursuit for the child of God. For the destiny carrying, born again, blood washed, blood bought, child of God. What should be your pursuit and my pursuit? Uh, the Lord does not want us to waste our time on things that will, that will dissipate our energy, our faith, our, 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 our everything, because we are pursuing the wrong things. The Lord wants us to focus on the right things, because over and over again, scripture, when I read the Gospels, the Lord keeps reminding me. Of things that people did that did not end, that they did, it led them nowhere. Amen. He wants us to spend our time on things that will matter for eternity, in things that will count for eternity, not spend 70 years on the earth, or 80, or 50, or more, in, 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 in 100 maybe, if the Lord Jesus Christ tarries. But at the end of the day, all of this effort, all of this toil, all of this, all of the pursuit comes to nothing or little gain, little value in the context of eternity. And so by the grace of the Lord this afternoon on today, I want to bring you this word about the right pursuit. Because the Lord wants us to follow, amen, and focus on the right things. Right things, things of righteousness, things that matter, that count, that will add value to our eternal capital, that will add value, that will make us richer and bigger in, it, in eternal value. Amen. No, that we must not equate God and, 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 and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ and the things of the kingdom with, with material value. Amen. Does the scripture not tell us to invest in, in to lay up our treasures in heaven? The scripture teaches us so, 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 to lay up treasure, to invest, amen, to gather, um, 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 accumulate tre treasure in heaven. But sadly, a lot of us, some of us, should I say, are busy pursuing things that mundane things, things that will not matter for eternity. It doesn't, God does not say we should not live well or have a good life. In, that. in fact, He came to give us a better quality of life, in my believing quality, living. Amen. But but above that, above all of that, our pursuit must be in line with, with his will, his purpose, his destiny, and indeed his his 
he's, 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 he, what he wants to, to, to do in us, and for us, and through us, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so let me take us to Matthew chapter number, number, uh, number six, verse number 24 to number 23, as we pick up this, this conversation this afternoon. Amen. If I don't finish it today, we'll carry it on to next week. Amen. Let's let the Holy Spirit help us to do a good job of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you read in your Bibles. If you're like me, you read from the New King James Version, then we will be reading the exact same words, but you may read it from the NLT, New Living Translation, or NIV, the International Version of the, of the Bible. It's the same, the same message. The words may differ slightly, but it's essentially the same message. Amen. Verse 24 says of Matthew chapter 6, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hear the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This verse alone it's a, is a treasure trove of, of sermon and messages and lessons. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hear the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. For the born again child of God, you should be, we must be serving God. Amen. And so we are loyal to God, but we despise the devil, we despise Satan, and everything that he represents or brings into the world. No one can serve two masters. So it's not one foot in, one foot out. One foot to this master, one foot to the other master. It's both feet to one master. No one can serve two masters. For either he have the one and love the other. Who do you love? I love Jesus. <laughs> I believe and confess that you too love Jesus. Amen. Don't, amen. I, I, I honestly, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You are usually loyal to those you love. Amen. You can be trusted. You will be faithful to the one you love. Amen. When there's hatred or strife, all those things that make for, 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 for hatred comes in, then you will despise that master and be unfaithful to them and disloyal to them. Amen. It's the story of two masters. Verse 25 says this to us. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the best of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more, more valued than they? Which of you by worry can add one cubit to his stature? Verse 28 reads, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, they neither grow, nor, 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 they, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, it is that even Solomon in all his glory was not arid or dressed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is turned into the oven, will he not more clothe you, O you of little faith? <laughs> Jehovah. We just finished a series on faith-based messages um, um, last Sunday. O ye of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, verse 31 says to us, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? For, or what shall we wear? What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But, verse 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen and amen. What a word this morning, people of God, this afternoon. On this day, the 16th of October, 2022. As the Lord, I believe, is calling some of us to order in terms of our pursuit. In terms of where we invest our time and energy and, 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 and even finances, where we invest our talents and skills and abilities, where we invest in. Yeah, I believe the Lord is trying to realign and, and correct our focus. No one can serve two masters. Who, which master are you serving? For either he will have the one and love the other. Which master do you love? Or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. Which master are you loyal to? You and I, us, we cannot serve God and mammon. Can I remind us, people of God, that Jesus in this text is talking to his people. Amen. He's talking to, to, to people that he knows. Well, he's speaking, this is part of someone of the mount, his disciples. 
Remember at the beginning, he went up on the high on top of the mountain and his disciples came and joined him and he began to teach them. I'm sure other people joined later, but his primary audience was his disciples. Let, let, let me take you to Matthew 5 so that you will see what, I, what I'm saying here. It's because this is part of the great sermon of the man. It's in Matthew 5 verse 1 says, and seeing the multitudes, he saw the multitudes, he went up on a mountain and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Amen. And so at a particular level, he saw everybody, everybody saw him. But when he wanted to teach, he went up higher. And some of us, I believe God is calling us to come up higher. Where we are is too low level. Low level thinking, low level living, low level uh, relationships, low level, you know, how, come on people of God. God wants us to come up higher. He's the most high God. He wants us to meet us in higher levels of life, higher levels of faith, higher levels of trust, the higher levels of loyalty, higher levels of faithfulness to him, higher levels of service to him and to the kingdom. Let me, the point I'm making the people of God is that the Lord is speaking to his disciples very, very specifically qualified. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Are you coming to Jesus? And if you do, how often do you come? Some of us come when it is convenient. Some of us come maybe once a week. Some of us come, okay, when we remember. Hallelujah to the King of glory. Thank you, Jehovah. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and, and taught them, teach them. He taught them, saying, I believe as he was teaching, other people joined. So it's in the course of teaching, we come into this this part of the teaching, where he's asking his disciples, in Matthew 6, 24, he's saying to his disciples, no man, no man can serve two masters. No one, no man, no woman, no family, no body of people, no community can serve two masters. For then he hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot, we cannot, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. I, I love the Lord. He, he, he does not mince words. He makes it very, very specific and is open. It is not debatable. He, the two masters, you cannot serve God and mammon. God represents eternity, represents the kingdom, represents, represents the spirit, re represents uh, heaven, represents eternity. And mammon represents everything that is opposite of God. You know, you know, some people say it's money. It's not just money, amen. It's wealth, it's riches, it's pride, it's arrogance, it's your social status, it's the, it's the things of the works of the flesh that are against and contrary to the things of God. That is what mammon is. The flesh man, your ability. Everything that is opposed to God is mammon. So don't just think it's money. Don't just think it's, it's, it's fame or popularity or status. No, 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 no. It's everything else that goes with man. The, the works of the flesh, the debauchery, the licentiousness, the adultery, the fornication, the lying, the murder, the envy, the jealousy, and everything else that goes with man. And many are in that street. Amen. That is, that is what they know. And that is what they are doing. Serving, as it were, mammon. But Again, remember, the Lord Jesus is speaking to us, his disciples. How is it that he's telling disciples, you cannot serve God and mammon? Is it possible then that there are people in church today as we speak who are serving God and mammon, who are trying to serve two masters? On the one hand, they claim, they, they claim and not just to they proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. On, on the other hand, hoo -hoo, hallelujah. Oh, come on, let us sing in people of God. Selah, as the psalmist would say. Amen. Or oh, Selah, as ah, some will correct me. <laughs> God be praised. This is, listen, people of God, this is Kingdom of Church, the city of the Lord. Amen. Where are what? Our salvation and, 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 our, and our gates praise. Everything we do is God and God alone. Very God centric, Christ centric, and Holy Spirit centric. So we have no time to share our lives or share our strength and our, and our abilities and talents to share our time between God and something else. No, 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 no. We are all for God. No one can serve two masters. No one. So don't try and pretend. Amen. So, so again, he's talking to us, believers, disciples. 
because you've passed, you are not a disciple. He is your master. He's the one teaching you. A disciple means you are following a master. You are following a teacher. Amen. You are a disciple. You are being tutored. You are a protege. Amen. Of a master, a mentor. These are the people he's talking to. Not just those who don't know him, but those who know him. And I believe all of us will, will know him. And our friends and colleagues and, and partners who join us on social media, Facebook and YouTube, maybe now or later, we have to watch this recording. I, I believe too that, that you know him. So why would they be telling you and I who know him? That we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and mammon. I think it's time we made a choice. <laughs> Choose who you will serve. That is what Elijah told the Israelites. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter number 18. Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. Can I encourage us? Amen. That it's always, it's always been a challenge, a battle, amen, of these two masters. And, and remember the world, the world is the is the market, is the is the, is the market, amen. And these two masters are coming, but Jesus already paid the price. But the enemy, Satan, the devil, who once had us, is still trying to, to, to hold us back down. Amen. But I pray that we will remember that he's already paid the price for our salvation. So we shouldn't be serving any other master but the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. And then he says to us, therefore, do not worry about your life. Mm. Verse 25, uh, what you will eat or what you will drink, not about your body, uh, what you will put on. Amen, 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 amen. Who, 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 did the, who, who is your master? It is your master that controls your life. Amen. And he's giving us an insight here how the enemy controls or tries to hold us back that he has better options. He's, be, he's, he's, he's better able to look after us in, in terms of our lives. Therefore, do not worry about your life. What do you will eat or what you will drink or what you or, 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 or about your body or what you will put on. Amen. And, and so the enemy comes through this angle to make us promises. Oh, there are better opportunities. And he can do more for us. And if, you, and if you really think about the people of God, you will realize that all of the promises of, of the enemy that he used to, to, to deceive people is about life. Amen. It's about, it's about, I will give you food and drink and, and clothes and your shape and your body and your status. I will, I will, you know, it's about this life, if you know what I mean. It's all the quality of this life. There's no context of eternity with what the enemy promises you. The enemy will never promise to take anybody to heaven. Only God does that. Only Jesus, does. only the Holy Spirit is our seal, amen, of that promise that God has made to us. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, amen, what you will put on. And the, the enemy occupies people, including some disciples, about their life or the quality of their life. He makes them sit on this, on this, on this particular seat, thinking that God has forsaken them and God is unable to. And he makes them all of the promises. If only you would do this, if only you would do that, if you would follow that man, follow that woman, if you would do this, and then if you, in all kinds of suggestions to make them believe that they will have a better quality of life. I am talking to people, amen, of God, who we see in this, in this text, the Lord is also talking to. His disciples, people who are supposedly following him, who should know better. His message, his mantra was about the kingdom, was about the, the heaven. But yet, some of these disciples, as we have in church today, were, 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 were between these two opinions, or trying to combine these two opinions, trying to bring these two perspectives into their life, trying to walk in these two perspectives. I will serve God and serve mammon. It just won't work. Just will work. It just will not work. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Amen. No about your body. Hallelujah. What you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the bears of the air. For they neither, neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And no, this is not spiritual food now. He's not taking them to heaven to feed them. He feeds them on earth. Hallelujah. Are you not more valid than they? Which of you by worry can add one cubit to his stature? Not one, not one. 
of us can add anything to our stature by worrying. Hallelujah. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the leaves of the field. Amen. How they grow. They neither, grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, was not dressed like one of these. The beauty, the combination of colors. You look at your garden, if you plant, if you got, if you got to plant, you see how the, the pink and the yellow and the orange and all the greens and every color, how they come together. You trim them, you cut them down and give them a, a number of days or weeks, they all grow up again. Effortlessly, without any effort from you. God is at work. So verse, verse 20, 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the leaves of the field, how they grow. They did not toil nor spin. And, I, and, I, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Listen, people of God, I, I like clothes. I mean, come on, we all like clothes. But your value, your value is not in the clothes you wear. The clothes may be expensive. Amen. <laughs> in the eyes of Almighty God, in the context of eternity, your value is not in the. You may wear all kinds of brands. Some people go about. They, you know them. They are called John Smith, but everything they are wearing is somebody else's name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of course, I like clothes. I wear brands as well, but that is not our value. That is, you may you may be dressed in in, in from head to butt for the head to your toes. It may be five thousand pounds or ten thousand dollars, but that is not how God values you. That is not the value that, that heaven recognizes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. So why do you worry about, 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 about clothes and all of these things? Amen. I, I, and, and I like the way it takes us to verse, verse, verse number 13. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the heaven, the very same beauty you admired yesterday, next, next week you are going to chop it down to trim, to trim the, the garden and the, the plants and the weeds. Are you going to throw them into the incinerator or oven and burn them up. If God, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is turned into the oven, will he not much, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, ouch. Come on, somebody. Let me say, ouch. Ah. Oh, ye of little faith. So this is the problem. I'm not preaching the first base messages anymore. We did that. We stopped, stopped doing that. But we cannot but talk about this matter of little faith. Why? Because his disciples are supposed to be full of faith, totally trusting God. He messed he messed in God that, yes, as God has said it, he's made a promise to us, he will bring the pass. The problem is not God. It's, it's, the, it's the disciple he's speaking to who is of little faith. Mm -hmm. The problem is not God that God is not able to deliver. Is that do we have the capacity for God to deliver? And your capacity for God to deliver to you is your faith in God. Do you trust God? And those who don't trust God and those who have little faith will gravitate to the other master. Yes, they claim to know God. They will come to church. They will even give offerings and pay tithes. They may even set up and be a part of a team or an activity group in the church. They will, you know, they will they will do everything that we know, the Christianese things. But deep down, deep down, where we cannot see, but God sees only. For man sees on looks on the outward appearance. We see on the outside. Only God sees on the inside. It may only God sees. It, God corrected Samuel, the prophet Samuel. Amen. You look at all the outside, all these boys from 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 um, um, Jesse, uh, uh, Eliab, and, and and Shama and Abinadab. No, I'm not looking on the outside. I'm looking on the inside, their heart. So of the seven boys paraded, not one made it. Only the reject that was at the back back of the house, tending sheep and 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 and, and everything else that the, the animals that his father just had, and writing poetry and singing songs to God. That was the one that God chose to be the next king after, after Saul. And, and so what we see is people on the outside, disciples like you and I, uh, believers, uh, you know, yes, doing everything and, 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 and everything that we know to do. But deep down, deep down, you look at it, God looks on the hand and says, oh, you of little faith. It is not about God. It's not about God not being able to deliver or make his promises to any of us. It's about do we really trust God? Do we have faith in God? 
Verse number 30, Matthew chapter 6. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is turned to the open, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Ah, ouch. That's painful, Lord. But we deserve it to be told off. It's not about God. Uh, <laughs> it's not about God at all. The problem is not God. Let's be honest. Amen. Come on. I, I think the first step in this in healing is to admit that you have a problem, that you are sick. Come on, people of God. If 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 if, if, if we need to admit to our, if don't don't admit to me, God, I'm not your God, I'm not your master. I admit to your between yourself and your God that you are you have faith, you have problem, you are doubting. Uh, you know, admit to your if, if go back to Mark chapter nine. The man who brought his son to church for he to be healed of the demon that possessed him, you know, the, the epileptic boy. His father threw out his hands and said, "Lord, I I I help me help my own belief. I believe, Lord, help my own belief." Upon his confession, that he had no faith. He, had, he was an unbeliever. An unbelieving believer, should I say. It was at that point, Jesus did his, the miracle and healed the boy. There are many unbelieving believers today in the house of God. Can I remind us one more time that the Lord is speaking to believers. Oh, let me see. Oh, his disciples, as he, as he put it in, in the text. Amen. How can his disciples be of little faith? When they have lit you faith, even though they have the master in their life, the master of miracles, the master of life, how can they draw power? How can they draw grace? How can they draw anointing? How can they draw the power that they need? Remember the woman with this seal of blood, Mark chapter 5. Full of faith, she came. Never been in disciple, never been in the crowd, never had any teaching, not even. She came and just told you what she told herself. At which evidence her faith. If I could just touch him, not lay hands on me, Lord. Not, not, not come to my house. No, 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 none of that. Just let me touch his, his garment. I will be made whole. So what she convinced herself of and what she believed of, of Jesus, that is what God, he called, oh, your faith has made you well. Go your way. And yet he comes to tell, tell us, his disciples, we have little faith. Hmm. Church, Let's let's can we can we examine our ways? I think there's a scripture in Corinthians that says, <laughs> examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Can we examine our, ourselves? Now, if God so clothe the clothes the grass of the field, which today is and, and tomorrow is turned into the oven, amen. Will he not much more clothe you? Will he not much more? Will he not much more? Not much more clothe you? That he will do more for us. He will do more for us. He will do a lot more for us. He is he's ready, he's willing, but it takes faith as the medium. It takes faith as, as the, as the uh, come on, I said it before. Uh, faith is the currency that works in, in, in heaven with God. Amen? Show God some faith and he will deliver the goods. Yet we, 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 are, we are trying to do it in our, in our strength because the other, the other master, Mammon, is making promises. If you can just not bother with God and with church, if you can pray less, if you can spend more time in doing this and that and that and that and that and that. Oh, okay, just do church only on Sundays. No, don't bother with God on Monday. You got work to do. You have business to run. Listen, I work, I do business. As, I'm a professional. Amen. And also, I, run, I, do, I, I do other stuff, you know. But, but listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, uh, the Holy Spirit, and the kingdom, I, uh, come on, comes first. Come first. Amen. Verse 31, it says to us, therefore, do not worry. Uh, yeah. Saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, not one or two, many, all of these things, the Gentiles seek. Oh, my goodness. There is another ouch. He's speaking to disciples, but he's telling them, you are doing what the Gentiles do. People who don't know God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles. Meanwhile, his audience is his disciples. And I believe now other people have joined in multitudes. But the primary audience was his disciples, like I said before. Amen. Ah. 
Kingdom Gospel Church, City of the Lord, please, our gates, sorry, our walls are our, our, our salvation and our gifts are praise. Let it be so, let it be true. Not only in our confession, but in our belief. And let it, let it, let heaven, let heaven see it in us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles sing. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. That is the, it is the master's responsibility is his role to provide. Your heavenly father knows you need. I like to, add to, to spend a minute on the word need. Amen? Need. Somebody, wherever you have me shouts, need. Need. Amen? Hallelujah, church of God. It's about need. Amen? Not about want. The enemy will, 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 will put you on the seat to want more, want more, which opens the, the, road, the, the door to greed. You want more, you want more, you want more. No, God works on needs, what you need. Amen. Let me remind us, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because he knows my need. Oh, the Lord is saying things to us this morning, people of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But, um, um, I beg your pardon. Um, um, Psalm, not Psalm, Matthew 6, amen, 30 says, what does it say to us? What does it say to us? Sorry, 30, 31. For, um, um, for your heavenly father knows what you need. Knows that you need all these things. And so God works on our needs, not our wants. But the enemy will make you focus on what you want. Your appetite and, and all of these things that should not take your, dissipate your energy or dissipate your faith. It makes you, because you want, you want this, you want that, you want that. Meanwhile, God says, what do you need? I will supply. There's a difference between need and want. For after all these things, verse number 32, amen. The Gentile seek for your heavenly father knows that you need not what you want. So please look at Psalm 23 again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, 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 because he knows what you need. And because he knows what you need, what does he do? He makes you to lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside the still waters. He restores your soul. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though you walk through the valley of the of death, you shall fear no evil, for your God is with you, the good and great shepherd. His rod and his staff, they shall always comfort you. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He will anoint your heart with oil and your cup will run over. Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell and do well in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And I also pray for myself. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Why? Because he knows your needs. But the enemy will have us, not us in Jesus' name, have some people Focus on what they want. They want. They want. Your need is not your want. And your want is not your need. Amen. God works. And my God shall supply all your need. Philippians chapter number four. Amen. <laughs> There's a difference between want and need. The enemy, that master, will, will, will honestly, really, is greed and, and covetousness sometimes. You want more and more and more and more and more. A lot of the ones that people spend their time and energy pursuing, they don't really need them. Amen. The, 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 the mother of... of <laughs> oh, come on. Let, 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 let me not go, go, go there. You know, I, 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 God we, 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 is in your life to supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, according to Philippians chapter number four, verse, verse 19. Amen. What do you need is what God will supply, not what you want. Amen. What do you need? Somebody, please tell, tell the Lord what you need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
Amen. Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all your need, all your need. And God knows you have need of all these things. But, but our desire, and, and, and I mean, our propensity and our desire to want, you know, to, for more and more is, is not based on need. Amen. It's based on want. And the enemy will, will foil it and will fire that flame of want. So that you want what you got, the one you want to now. You got it, you want three. You got it, you want four. You want to go higher. Of course, I'm not saying don't have aspiration to, to go higher in life, but what is driving that aspiration? Is it Jehovah God or is it the other, the other master? I don't know about you. I cannot answer for you, but I cannot answer for myself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. As I prepare to close the people of God, let, 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 let me say in verse 32 again, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows the things that you, you need. You need you are, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So, so people of God, if your heavenly Father knows all that you need all these things, why are you still pursuing and seeking these things? Amen. Why are we are we are we pursuing? Why are you? Why are we? Why why am I seeking vigorously after all these things? Your heavenly Father knows you need these things. And then in verse 33, it says to us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. So there's a promise that we, we don't even need to, 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 to pursue this. We don't even need to, we need to seek God and his kingdom first and his righteousness, not our ability to walk with God without any, any guilt or shame or sin consciousness, to be free before God, to serve God in liberty and, and, and full of faith. These things will be added. They are additions, not the primary pursuit of the believer. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, he says to us, about the future. For tomorrow, worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Make sure you cross the day in faith into tomorrow. Make sure you walk in faith today because God is not examining you tomorrow. He's not examining you as of yesterday because you already crossed. He's examining your heart as of today. Now faith is now is the present time, people of God. So as I close the people of God, I submit to you uh, the, 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 that we should I mean, this is only part one. We'll continue next Sunday. I didn't even get into my notes. I'm speaking as Lord is giving me no trance. Amen. I've not even got into my notes. Hallelujah. This is how, how how important this topic is. God has been speaking to us and he's been, he's been, we've had some out moments because he's speaking to his disciples who are beginning to follow the ways of the Gentiles because they want and want and want more. And in that, in, and because of that, they are now serving a second master. But he says to us, you cannot serve God and mammon. What does he say, say to us first to do? Amen. Verse 33, but seek first, first things first, amen, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to us. I pray for you and for myself, people of God, that as we honor God and follow God and pursue after him and seek him, amen, and serve him with the whole of our heart, full of faith, may God make to pass that which he has promised. Amen. And all these things, which <laughs> is occupying people's life almost, shall be added unto us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Church, hear the voice of the Lord this morning. It is not me. It is God who is speaking to us to correct our mindsets, our thinking, and indeed our pursuits. Perhaps he's watched and seen us is expending time and life and energy on the things that he can freely give and add on to us. Meanwhile, the primary thing to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, we are, we are not doing that. Maybe he's trying to tell us, teaching us, this is the way to do it. Seek the kingdom first. And my righteousness and these things that are occupying your, your life will be added to, to you naturally because you are in the kingdom and you are walking, walking before God blamelessly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank God for this world. May, may, may he bring us the, 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 the right knowledge to correct us, to motivate and inspire us to, to seek God and his kingdom first. First things first. So that indeed, amen, we shall be faithful to him, loyal to him, 
Love him because we are serving God and not mammon. Until next Sunday, the people of God, remember, it's the kingdom gospel church, the city of the Lord, where our walls are salvation and our gates are praise. The Lord bless you. Keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.